Hello, welcome everybody to the first lesson in uh, this course of Geophysics in Python. Uh, the course is given by me, I'm Luca Dauria from Instituto Volcanologico de Canarias and well we start talking about inverse problems. Um, before uh, starting going into the topics uh, related to inverse problems we need to give a short introduction to some basic aspects of Python. So uh, this is not supposed to be uh, a Python course, uh, but we need to give at least uh, some basic information about some specific aspects of Python. And the first one is a library of Python, which is called NumPy. So as the name suggests, this library is mostly uh, devoted to numerical computing and in this lesson we will discuss about some basic uh, operation uh, of uh, dealing with linear algebra so with the um, handling of arrays and matrices with numpy well uh, before starting let me tell you that uh, all the examples that I'm going to show through the courses uh, can be downloaded through this uh, GitHub repository. Uh, this is the page of uh, GitHub and there is a folder uh, called inverse methods in which, well, currently there are uh, the files from for the first two, first two lessons. Uh, there are two different kinds of files. One is the standard uh, Python code with the extension uh, PI uh, and the other is what is called the Python notebook with the extension I, Pi and B. Uh, well, um, before explaining what does it mean, uh, let me first tell that if you are going to use uh, the standard Python code, you can run it in some Python uh, development environment. Uh, well, let me suggest you uh, two possible uh, Python development environments. Um, the first one is p which is the most widely used. Uh, it's my preferred, um, but if you, it's general purpose, but you can use also Spider uh, which is very common as well and it's um, more oriented toward uh, scientific computing. So just pick uh, your preferred one, it should make no difference uh, for the purposes of uh, this course. But if you um, are not an expert Python programmer, I suggest using uh, Jupyter Notebook. So uh, Jupyter is a very powerful tool uh, to share uh, Python code uh, in a collaborative fashion and uh, well you can download and install Jupyter on your computer but if you are not willing uh, to do you can also uh, go to this web page in which you can run uh, Python uh, notebooks online you will not need to install Jupyter on your computer um, this is just um, a matter of uh, taste, so as you prefer. Well, um, in this presentation uh, I will show uh, the examples by running uh, the Python notebook online, so actually uh, this uh, web page. Well, this is uh, the, just the viewer, that means uh, it's just to show the code and uh, if you are familiar with uh, other languages like uh, Mathematica, uh, you will see that it's pretty similar. There are cells with uh, individual cells with a few uh, lines of code which can be run it uh, independently. Well, this is just to show the code. If you want to run it, you need to push the button here with the three small circle. It's the binder. Um, let me um, uh, remind you that um, the first time you run uh, uh, the binder, it can take uh, some minutes uh, for starting. So don't be uh, worried if it, if it takes uh, long uh, 
at the first run. Well, here I have uh, the page already opened and we are ready to start uh, running uh, the examples, the Python examples. Well, let's go back to the presentation. We first <coughs> need to introduce uh, some objects which are uh, parts of the basic uh, of the core of Python language. Um, Python allows uh, uh, four types of collection, each with uh, different uh, features. The most commonly used is the list, which is a, an ordered collection of objects, any kind of objects. Uh, and with a list you can access to the elements, individual elements, uh, using uh, indices. Um, so it's very useful and very general purpose. Uh, well, let's see how it works. Now we are going to create our first list. Uh, this is the syntax. So uh, the square brackets are used to define a list. So if you put objects inside square brackets separated by a comma, in Python you are defining a list. And we are going to call this list L. Okay, so here in this line we are creating a list and here we are just printing the list on the screen. By the way, uh, this syntax, uh, this symbol here, uh, tells Python that uh, it should ignore uh, this line. That means this is just a comment. This is just uh, to make easier the understanding of a, a Python code. So it's just a comment. Okay, let's run the first cell of the Python notebook. And well, the result is not very surprising. Uh, the code just printed the original list L. Uh, with the element separated by a comma. Uh, in this case, uh, our list was composed solely of integer numbers, uh, but uh, Python allows very general lists. Uh, actually, uh, in this uh, line of code, we are creating a list composed by two lists, this and this. Well, the first list is, uh, has two elements. One is the integer 1, just a number, and the second is a character. This is the syntax to uh, indicate a, a character in Python, the character C. The second list is composed by an integer number and a floating point number, uh, 4.5. Okay, let's see. And again, uh, the output is not very surprising. It's just the original list. Okay, so if we go back uh, to the list composed only uh, of numbers, uh, let's try doing some mathematical operation on it. That means let's try adding one to the element of the list. We try and we get an error. We get an error because um, you are not allowed doing mathematical operations on Python lists. To do mathematical operation, you need uh, NumPy. You need uh, different objects uh, which can be, uh, are con can be defined only using the NumPy library of Python. Okay, before I start um, talking about NumPy, uh, we need to run this cell. This cell is required only if you are running uh, the notebook online. If you are running uh, the Python notebook on your uh, computer, there is no need uh, to execute this cell. This is just to tell uh, the remote computer that uh, he needs to install the NumPy library. But usually on your computer, you have already the NumPy uh, library installed. Okay, let's do it. Wait, just wait a few seconds. And okay, it's done. Well, now we are ready to use NumPy. Mm, Python is a highly modular language. That means um, that all the function mm, that can be uh, required in your code um, are stored in uh, separate libraries. And 
you ask Python uh, using only the library that you need, you actually need. So if you don't need to do numerical computing, uh, you are not going to ask Python to load uh, NumPy, for instance. Uh, this is very useful because uh, it allows Python code to be and Python, uh, the running of Python code uh, faster uh, and without um, using uh, much memory. Um, well, so um, before using any Python library, you need to tell it explicitly, explicitly that you need that library. And the command to use is import. So writing, <coughs> sorry, import numpy, you are just telling Python that you want, you are going to use numpy in the, for the rest of the code. Okay, so once you loaded numpy in memory, you can use it, Be, not before. How mm, can we use? Uh, all the commands and all the objects defined uh, in NumPy using this syntax. So before using any command, in this case we are using a command which is called array, before using any command of NumPy we need uh, to uh, write before NumPy dot. Uh, this is to tell Python that this command uh, should be uh, taken from the NumPy library. Uh, there are other ways to do this, but we will talk about this uh, later. Okay, what are we going to do uh, calling uh, the command array of the NumPy library? Uh, well, in this case, uh, we are using one of the most useful, basic but useful commands of NumPy, which translates, uh, actually translates a list, a Python list, this one, into an array. What is the difference between a list and an array? Well, I already told you that a list can contain any kind of objects uh, of different uh, types. An array uh, usually is devoted to numbers of the same type. So you can have an array of integer numbers, an array of floating point numbers and so on. And most important uh, thing is that you can do mathematical operations on array, so they are very useful for our purposes. So let's see the output of this cell, and well, it's not very uh, impressive, we have just uh, the original uh, list. Let's uh, compare the output of this A, uh, which is an array, with the output of the list. Well, the only uh, difference that we see is that the list, uh, the object of a list are separated by a comma, while the object on array just uh, are just separated by a space. Well, but there is a much deeper difference. And the difference is that on array, you can do mathematical operations. So here, we added one to each element of the list, of, uh, sorry, of the array. And this is the result. Well, it's very important <coughs> to understand uh, the difference between an array and a list. Okay, is the array the only uh, object, the only type available in NumPy? No, of course not. There is another very useful object which is, um, which are matrices. Well, matrices are um, incredibly uh, useful uh, when dealing with uh, geophysical inverse problems. So we need to understand um, very, very clearly how to use them with NumPy. Well, we are using again the same command as above, array, but in this case the, array, the, the argument of the command is a list of lists. So uh, the outer square brackets uh, are delimited uh, the the main the list and each element of the list is a list by itself composed by four integer numbers. Well, let's take a look at the output. 
Uh, the output is a familiar shape of a matrix composed by three rows and four columns. So um, here we have the, the first list is the first row, the second list is the second row, and so on. Uh, we can access, if we don't know uh, what is the size uh, of a matrix, we can use these properties. This property, um, which is called shape of a matrix, and the output is this. So it's uh, um, technically uh, in Python, this is a tuple. Let's remind that a tuple is a collection of Python, which is very similar to a list. The only difference is that you cannot change the element of a tuple. It's fixed. Once you create it, you cannot change it. Okay, so this is just telling you uh, that the shape of the matrix B is of three rows and four columns. Okay, now let's start learning how to access individual elements of uh, matrices. So suppose we need to access uh, the elements uh, at the first line, at the first column. Uh, well, this is the syntax. Let me explain uh, how does it mean. Uh, the first uh, number in square brackets uh, indicates uh, the row. Uh, well, it is zero. Uh, we need to mm, take, uh, we need to make um, very clear that in Python uh, indices starts from zero. So the first element of an array has uh, an index which is zero, not one. Uh, this is an important difference with other languages like uh, MATLAB for instance. So when we access the element zero of an array, it's the first one. And here we are accessing the first row and the first column. Okay, if we want to access the second line and the third columns, well, this is it. It just B, one, two, of course. Well, if we run the code, we are not surprised by the output. So this is one, the first column of the first line, and this is four which is the third column of the second line. Okay, fine. Well, this is a, a syntax which is quite cumbersome. We can make it easier uh, just by using this alternative syntax in which we separate uh, the number of the line and the number of the column just by a comma. Well, the output is the same, of course. Uh, we can access uh, to um, a wall li um, line of the matrix or to a wall column. This is a way to access, for instance, to the first line. We are just telling Python, give me all the line whose index is zero, which is the first, of course. And, well, we got it. So this is the first line of this matrix. Um, this kind of syntax can be used only for lines. There is a more general syntax which can be used both for lines or columns. And well, it's this one. We replace it, uh, the index of the column uh, by a period. A period means all. So we are telling Python, give me all the elements of the first uh, line of any columns and well the output is the same of course and we can use the same syntax for columns so here we are telling python give me all the line for the second column and we got it 2 2 8 and if we compare with the original matrix is 2 2 8 okay well uh, we can do uh, a selection of uh, only a portion of a matrix, which technically is called a sub-matrix. Uh, for instance, suppose we want to access 
the first two lines and the first two columns. So this, uh, these two and these two ones. Okay. So what we do is using a syntax like this. So we are telling Python, give me uh, all the rows between zero and two. Uh, remember that using this syntax uh, means that the first is included, the second not. So uh, zero uh, column two means that we are asking Python to, to give us the column, the row, zero and one, not two. This is important to remember. And the same is for the columns. Okay. And this is the output. So this is the expected output. It's a sub matrix of the original one. Uh, we can use um, other, other way to select sub matrices. And for instance, this is one. Well, this syntax means um, give me uh, all uh, the columns uh, using a step of two. That means we are using uh, one uh, line. Um, we, are, we are asking Python to give us the first, the third, the fifth, and so on. We are excluding uh, the um, some of the lines and some of the columns. So if you compare this matrix one three four seven with the original one we have taken this 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 and this element so we have discarded completely uh, the second uh, row the second column and the fourth column so well this is the um, uh, a lot of uh, different way to select sub matrices. This just to give you uh, an idea, but please uh, refer to the original uh, NumPy documentation um, to better understand all uh, these topics. Okay. Okay. Well, let's start now uh, talking about how manipulating matrices. Well, one of the basic operations uh, that can be done on a matrix is the transposition. That means uh, changing uh, rows and columns. And uh, the easiest way to do it is to using this syntax. That means putting um, point T, uh, uppercase T, after the name of the matrix. Well, if we see the results, it's uh, what we expected. So the original rows have became column. This one, this one, and this one. Well, okay. Uh, now let's uh, select uh, a sub matrix from the original matrix P. Uh, this is a square matrix having the same number of rows and columns. And well, this is just to show some basic operations which can be useful uh, when dealing with inverse problem. This is what is called a symmetrization of a matrix. That means summing it with its transpose. And what we get is a symmetric matrix in which the elements of Poiside with respect to the diagonal have the same value. So 5, 5, 7, 7, 12, 12. Um, there is a similar operation. Uh, if we do the difference between the matrix and its um, um, transpose, uh, we get an anti-symmetric matrix in which the elements outside the diagonal uh, are, uh, have an um, inverse uh, negative value. Uh, for instance, uh, we have 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 4 minus 4. Of course, in this case, the diagonal should be, is forced to be 0 for obvious, obvious reason. Uh, well, now mm, we can start using some uh, linear algebra uh, tools. Uh, the linear algebra tools are contained within uh, the LinAlg uh, library, which is inside NumPy. So if you do import NumPy, you are asking Python to load also all 
uh, the libraries contained in NumPy and among them there is Linalge which is used for some basic um, linear algebra uh, manipulations. Uh, for instance, here we are using uh, the command inv, which is just inverse matrix. So we are doing the inverse matrix of B. And this is it. So um, very easy uh, to do. And uh, well, uh, by definition, the inverse matrix is a matrix which multiplied by the original one should give the identity matrix, that is a matrix in which uh, the elements along the diagonal are 1 and all the other are 0. So if we do um, the product of B and <coughs> sorry, its inverse, this is what we get. So we are um, surprised because it's not what we were expecting. And the reason is that this syntax means that we are doing the product uh, element by element. <coughs> that means um, the first element of the matrix B is multiplied by the first element of the matrix IB and so on. But this is not the definition of matrix product. If we want to do a true matrix product, we need to use the command dot. And this is what we get. Well, uh, let me explain. This is not exactly an identity matrix. There is one, 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 zero, zero. But here we have very small numbers, which are 5.5 5, uh, by 10 at the minus 17. Well, it's not zero, but it's very, very close to zero. This is just because uh, doing the inverse and the matrix product uh, raises some uh, rounding uh, errors. This is uh, just due to the approximation of uh, the numbers which we need to do when uh, dealing with uh, a digital computer. But mm, from the practical point of view, uh, we can state that this is an identity matrix. So this is actually the matrix product between B and its inverse matrix. So it's fine for us. Well, another important operation in linear algebra is the determinant. And well, this is it. It's just the common that. Okay, now let's see how to create some special uh, matrices. Uh, matrices having some simple but useful properties. Uh, one command uh, to create uh, matrices is I. Uh, this command allows you uh, creating identity matrices in which uh, the elements along the diagonal are 1 and all the others are 0. And this is it. So here we create uh, an, ident an identity matrix 3 by 3. Uh, another command is zeros, which of course is going to create a matrix uh, composed of zero. Uh, in this case, we asked uh, NumPy to create a matrix with three rows and four columns. So it's uh, uh, a slightly more general syntax. Uh, another useful command is full, which allows you creating a, matri a constant matrix, that means a matrix composed of uh, a single value. And in this case, we, ask, we are asking Python to fill the matrix with the value 0 0.5. And this is the result. So we have a matrix with mm, two rows and three columns, and this is the result. Well, it's a matrix composed uh, by the same number. Mm, sometimes uh, this is useful for uh, uh, different applications. Okay, let's uh, move uh, to some more complex uh, topics uh, and uh, we are going to talk about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So I'm not going to explain what they are. Uh, I suppose that you have uh, you are already trained into basic linear algebra. Um, I'm just going to show you how uh, they can be computed using NumPy. 
so they belong to the Linalch library of NumPy and uh, the command uh, required to compute uh, eigenvalues and eigenvector is just ape, this one. Well, this command um, returns two uh, arrays, two NumPy arrays. One is uh, the arrays with eigenvalues and the other is a matrix with eigenvector. This is a very common syntax in Python. Often Python commands are um, returning more uh, than a value at the same time. Uh, in this case, uh, A is returning two arguments. Uh, well, let's see the output. Okay, so uh, eigenvalues is just an array composed of three elements, the three eigenvalues of a matrix and eigenvectors is a um, matrix in which individual eigenvectors are the columns. So please uh, keep this uh, in mind. Um, the matrix evect uh, is composed of eigenvectors ordered along Column. So this is the first eigenvector, this is the second, and this is the third. So this is the eigenvector associated to this eigenvalue, this is the eigenvector associated to the second eigenvalue, and so on. Well, for instance, if we want to extract uh, from, from the evect uh, matrix uh, the first uh, eigenvector, we need to extract uh, actually the first column. And well, this is the result, of course, it's the first column. Uh, before concluding this first lesson, uh, let me uh, remind you uh, a trick of uh, Python. This is uh, something in which unskilled uh, programmers, this is an error which is very common for unskilled programming because uh, sometimes um, it's very confusing and it can cause you a lot of problems in uh, debugging your code. Uh, the question is that when you are copying in Python uh, an object, what you are doing is not a physical copy, but only a symbolic copy. That means, suppose we are writing something like this. So B is the matrix that we already know. Uh, we want to copy B into another object called C. Okay, so what you may, be, may think about this command is that it is going to create a copy calling it C. Well, this is wrong. Uh, what Python is doing is just assigning uh, another name to B. So if we do operation on C, actually we are doing the same operation on B as well. So extra careful because you can get something like this. So we are supposing to operate only on C, but actually we are changing B as well. This can be very, very tricky. If you want to do a copy of an object in Python, you need to import this library, which is called copy. And you need to use a command of this library, which is called deep copy. So when you do a deep copy of B, you are physically creating another copy, independent copy, and you are calling it C. So if you, in this case, if you are operating on C, uh, you are not changing B, uh, like in the previous example. So let me show you, we are changing uh, the first element of C to minus two, and we see that B is unchanged. So we are changing only the matrix C, that this is, this is what we usually we want to do. Uh, but you need to uh, remember that the only way to do a physical copy is to use the command deep copy. Uh, using a syntax like this is doing only a symbolic copy. Okay, uh, well, this is a way uh, to load and to um, the library copy and to use uh, the command deep copy, 
there are other um, uh, syntax which are uh, more handy, more uh, in simple to use. For instance, if we write from copy import deep copy, we are telling Python to load only the command deep copy from the library copy. So we are um, storing in memory just a part of the library copy, and this is, this can be very useful uh, if you don't want your code to waste uh, much memory, but uh, the result is uh, perfectly equivalent uh, with the previous example. Okay, so this is just a very short introduction to NumPy. Uh, NumPy is a very uh, useful library. We uh, discussed only about n-dimensional um, arrays, uh, but NumPy offers uh, various numerical tools uh, various linear algebra operations, Fourier transform, random numbers, and much more. So I suggest you taking a look at the documentation of NumPy. And well, that's all uh, for this first lesson. Uh, stay tuned uh, for the next one, which will be about how doing basic plotting in Python using Matplotlib.